second video in a big series all about mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes on the guitar. This is so we can target chord tones when we're improvising over chord changes. The first step is just get the vocabulary down. Just be able to play them up and down, improvise with them a little bit individually. And in this video, we are going over the minor triad shapes, the five melodic arpeggio shapes of the minor triad all off of C. This stuff is necessary for jazz improvisation. It's great for any other kind of lead guitar improvisation to hit chord tones when we're improvising or if we're composing melodies, we'll know where those chord tones are. It's great just for general music theory clarity on the fretboard and also just technique practice. I have a free download if you want to follow along. It's my chord tone vocabulary pack. Shows all the arpeggio shapes for 12 different chord types, which are all the chords that we're going over in this series, including the minor triad from this lesson. Just use the link in the description to get that. Also, there's going to be a link down there to a playlist of this full series. In this video, I'm going to just play up and down and demonstrate how I want you to be able to play these five melodic arpeggio guitar shapes of the minor triad. Then I'm going to go through and describe exactly what fingering to use with the left hand for just being able to play them up and down. And lastly, I'll just demonstrate improvising with each shape a little bit, which is the next step I recommend after we're able to just play them with the correct fingerings. This is essential stuff to practice, and I just love going back to the fundamentals all the time. Let's dig in. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics and musicianship topics, all designed to help us gain more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. All right, here's a demonstration of just going up and down each of these five minor triad shapes. Then I'll show you the fingering, then we'll jam a little. Okay, so the fingerings for this, we're gonna start on the lowest root, we're gonna go up, all the way back down, go back below the lowest root, and then land on it again. When I'm doing scales, I often stop on every root to kind of map all those out. For the chord tones, I like to just kind of target that lowest root. You can do it any number of ways. This is just my initial and kind of main recommendation. So we got the first finger on the root, then pinky, then third finger. Now, instead of rolling this finger, I like to use the tips of my fingers whenever possible to keep things as light and easy and clean. So here we're just gonna use third finger, pinky, middle, first, all tips of the fingers, pinky again, right? So it's like that chord shape, but I don't want you to actually put any notes down until you need them, and I don't want any notes ringing over each other. We're doing melodic arpeggios here. Pinky, first finger, roll, finger roll. So you have to play on the side of your finger, then roll to the tip, and then roll back. Okay, that's crossing strings with a, with a single finger is called a roll. So that is that first shape on the, it's just the first one because I'm doing everything off C and that's the furthest one to the left of the neck. It's not inherently the first shape, it's just the first on our particular sheet because of the key we're in. So let's do the next one. We got uh, pinky, then middle finger, first finger, roll. Okay, and after that, this is a bit tricky. You wanna hop over to the middle finger for the flat three. Okay, so don't reach over to it. It's gonna cause too much tension. You can do this in a relaxed, connected way. First finger, second finger. Now that sets you up for tip, tip, tip of these next three fingers. There's the flat three, there's the five, tip of the finger, third finger, tip of the finger, finger, fourth finger. Okay, so that roll to the second finger or back is kind of the trickiest part. Right? That's another way you could do it. Roll, roll, roll with the pinky. And they have their trade-offs, right? That actually, I would say, is equally acceptable to this. So you can, you can choose. I'll show you some alternatives sometimes, but I like to kind of make sure I have the tip of the finger version really kind of figured out. 
and again, they're, they're kind of equal because this one is hard to kind of shift positions, and this one is hard because of using your pinky a bunch and the pinky roll, but you get to stay in the same position. So sometimes things are just a trade-off as far as what's the most relaxed. So that's that. Okay. Okay, so either of those you can kind of choose for yourself. Just I like to have many options. When we improvise, you'll see we're not going to use those fingerings for improvising. We're just we just need a fingering, a solid, uh, planned out fingering for just going up and down the vocabulary of the shape. Then when you improvise, use anything at all because you're improvising. Fingering has everything to do with context. That's why I don't talk about it much or show it in diagrams because it has to do with where you're coming from, where you're going to. Um, that's with chord shapes with any single note thing, that's what matters with fingering. So uh, I'll map it out when there's an actual arrangement of a specific melody or like we're going up and down in a specific order. So, okay, there is gonna be a fingering to choose. I'm kinda liking the pinky thing right now. So you can test out and see if you like that too. So I'll use different options at different times. Okay, the next one is first finger, fourth, third, pinky, first, roll, roll. Notice I'm not saying bar, because I don't want this. You don't want them to ring. You want it to be a melodic statement. Okay. Okay, so they ring over a little bit sometimes, but ideally not. Okay, kind of tricky. Okay, pinky there. First, pinky, third, pinky, first, 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 pinky. Okay. Next one, this is the neglected chord shape because of the roots on the fourth string, less less uh, common for this arpeggio shape. One, three, four. This is great workout for technique because you have to go third finger, fourth finger, second, and usually the third and fourth finger working together, alternating is uh, weaker for most of us, so. Good, then you're gonna roll to the five of the chord, flat three, back up. Okay. Last one. Okay. All in this 12th position until, uh, for those middle four strings at least, fourth finger, third finger, first, whoops, sorry, minor, may, played major there. First finger, middle finger, first finger, middle again, and then don't reach over, but shift over to the flat three, third finger on the five, the highest note there. And roll or hop down pinky to the one five one okay that's that final shape on the sheet okay I'm gonna improvise a little bit with each of those with the improvising it's just more about mapping out how well do we see these try to make something musical but that's not the main point. The main point of our focus is how well do we know these. Try to be relaxed and musical in terms of rhythm and phrasing, but uh, you just wanna stick to chord tones. After that, you can try to play around with scales around the chord tones, but knowing the chord tones so deeply and so well is what's gonna allow you to target them and land on them when you are playing other stuff and more interesting tones. So I got a little loop here, just a C minor triad, and we'll just play with each of the shapes. position kind of trying to break it up I slide into notes that's fine that doesn't count as a different note okay next shape Not sticking to the strict fingerings. You can if you want. Okay, next one. Did 
did a little thematic thing there, kind of jump into all those other notes around a little interval idea between the one and flat three. Next shape, I like to sweep when you have three notes um, cascading on three strings. Very limiting, right? So to get something to actually... Okay, that was not... That was uh, not in there, played that flat five, that's okay. That wasn't on purpose, just a mistake. Okay, just kind of different way of working with the vocabulary. Again, after that, if you want to play around with uh, more scale, and kind of targeting the chord tones and then venturing away from them and then targeting them again. That's a great kind of next step, but make sure you can just go up and down them with proper fingering or a planned out fingering. And I gave you at least one way to start that and then improvise with just chord tones. And then you can start venturing away. Even if you play like all kinds of crazy chromatic stuff, being able to just get your hand to any moment you want to land back on chord tones, that's kind of the secret to getting weird and being able to recover from it or playing what we feel like is a wrong note and then making it sound intentional and all that stuff. So don't forget to download my melodic arpeggio chord tone vocabulary pack for all the diagrams of 12 different chord types, including the minor triad from this lesson. Just use the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. Let me know in the comments what you struggle with when trying to improvise over chord changes. Very often it's targeting the changes, knowing where we are. That's why we're doing this series and working on the vocabulary. Hit that like button, please, if you liked this lesson and I post a new lesson every week. Next week, we're doing the same formula, the same workshop with the major seven chord. This is gonna get more interesting sounding, more fun to play with, still very important to map out. Looking forward to seeing you there. Take care, thanks for watching and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.